Okay, hi there, and welcome to another in our series of essay plans for 2019. This is Macroeconomics, and it looks at the current account deficit and policies. Uh, some data here on the current account. The deficit was 82 billion in 2018, up on the previous year. And the deficit expressed as a share of national output was 3.9% of GDP in 2018. The question, assess policies that might be most effective in reducing and cutting the size of the UK current account deficit in the future. Now, with essays, I'd like to build two solid KAA points and then evaluate each point in turn and then come to a final reasoned conclusion. So here's our question. And again, the crucial point is to build a really strong, solid, structured answer. Good use of diagrams, good use of contextual evidence if you can, and evaluate as you go. My first KA point is that you could reduce the deficit on the current account by a demand side policy, perhaps a rise in direct taxation. So if you lift income taxes, for example, that might be an increase in the rate of income tax. It could also be maybe a, a fall in income tax allowances, but some kind of increase in the direct tax burden. That has the effect of cutting real disposable incomes, which in turn causes a contraction in household spending. Consumption, of course, is the biggest part of aggregate demand. A fall in household spending reduces the demand for imports, and we call this an expenditure-reducing effect. Making the working assumption that the value of exports remains the same, the value of things we're selling overseas remains more broadly constant. If people are spending less on imports, that will lead to an improvement in the net trade balance, X minus M, which I hope you know is a component of the current account. Then you have to evaluate the point that you've made. So are higher taxes, are they effective in improving the current account? Well, higher direct taxes are not always effective in cutting spending. People might see the tax rises perhaps as a temporary increase in tax, and they may choose to maintain their spending by lowering their savings, saving less out of disposable income. The, the household savings ratio might fall. Uh, and also, if people are spending less, if consumption is falling, then that can actually reduce profits for businesses and might then lead to a fall in planned capital investment, which in turn, if there's less investment, the UK only invests 17% of our GDP, that could hinder going forward the productive capacity of businesses that export. So cut spending, yes, import demand will fall, but you also risk cutting investment. My second point in this essay plan is to focus on another approach, and that is for perhaps the monetary authorities to try to achieve a competitive depreciation of the exchange rate of sterling against the dollar, against the euro. They might do that by keeping interest rates lower than they would otherwise do, by expanding QEs, increasing the liquidity in the banking system, uh, could also then lead to an, an outflow of money from the UK economy, or in theory, they could directly intervene in currency markets if they so wished, selling pounds, buying dollars, buying euros, for example. Now, weaker currency increases import prices and makes exports more competitive, priced in dollars and euros. That then leads to expenditure switching effects and an improvement in the net trade position, providing that the Marshall Lerner condition is met. We come back to that in a second. So perhaps engineering a currency depreciation could be a factor helping to restore the UK's external trade position. However, on the other hand, a counterpoint is that the main causes of a current account deficit, certainly from the UK perspective, are likely to be structural, supply-side causes, perhaps linked to a persistent lack of investment or a persistent productivity gap with countries like Germany, America and Japan. So the causes are structural, not linked necessarily, not due to an overvalued exchange rate. Cutting the exchange rate won't necessarily fundamentally change your trade position. And the crucial point, related point, is that many exports, the things we sell overseas, they also require imports. If you're selling a car, that could have had imports from many different countries coming in from around the world. So a weaker pound increases the cost of imported raw materials, component parts. It also makes imported technology more expensive, which can again can then hamper and hinder price competitiveness in the future. There's no guarantee that a fall in the exchange rate will necessarily make you a lot more competitive. 
Then you need to reach a final conclusion. Uh, your exam board will tell you how long they expect for this final conclusion. My exam board were looking for a relatively short conclusion, but tries to say something fresh. Doesn't just repeat what's already been said. So um, here's my point. Demand side policies carry risks, cuts in real living standards if you depress the economy. And in fact, the option of a competitive devaluation of the currency for the UK is not available. The UK operates a, a free floating exchange rate. Now, the pound might, may weaken automatically a little bit if the current account deficit goes up, but you can't necessarily, well, you can't intervene in the currency market if you choose to operate with a free floating exchange rate. Hence, supply side economic reforms can perhaps be more effective in the long run in helping to redress and rebalance external trade. Maybe cuts in corporation tax designed to attract inward investment from overseas. Car making firms here coming to the UK, producing in the UK, exporting out of the UK. Increased government investment in STEM education, tax relief for R&D in emerging sectors such as life sciences, biotechnology, renewable energy, for example. These can increase expand a country's export potential, particularly in industries where global demand is likely to be pretty strong in the years that lie ahead. So my argument is that demand side policies, if you just cut demand, you risk hitting living standards. What you should focus on are effective, specific supply side policies in export growth sectors. Loads of concepts, perspectives that are covered in the answer. In particular, key distinction between expenditure reducing and expenditure switching policies. The Marshall Learner Condition, of course, comes in. The J-curve, causes of competitiveness and elasticities of demand for exports and imports, including both price and income elasticity. Diagrams, always good to support your KAA with a diagram. If you're focusing on expenditure reduction, shift of demand to the left, um, causes the inflation default and should make it more, more competitive in relative terms. However, also perhaps causes risks a period of deflation. And uh, anyway, the current account normally improves during a recession anyway, but there's a big cost if you go for expenditure reduction. There's a big cost in terms of lost output and rising unemployment. The Greeks, of course, have seen a significant internal devaluation of their country. Falling prices, falling wages, falling output, falling investment. The current account has improved because the economy has shrunk by over 25%, and that's caused a collapse in demand for imports. So Greece will be a good example to use of the risks of expenditure reduction. And the J-curve nearly always makes an appearance in a trade deficit, external deficit question. This is the way I prefer you to draw it. A fall in the currency initially may make the trade deficit worse. When the elasticity is demand are low for imports and exports. Hopefully, if the Marshall learning condition is, is met, then the trade improvement will happen. But it's highly unlikely that the currency depreciation on its own will take you from a current account deficit of over 4% of GDP into a position of surplus. So you need to be aware of the context in which the question happens. There we go. Hopefully, you found this uh, essay plan on the current account a useful exercise. Thank you.